Well, I'm now joined from central London by Sir David Oman, former director of the UK's Communications Surveillance Centre, GCHQ, now visiting professor at King's College in London. And in Dusseldorf, Germany, is Annie Machon, a former intelligence officer for MI5. Let me start with you, uh, Sir David. Uh, so the spy chiefs told us today, told the British public through Parliament, that we had to trust them when it comes to oversight of their activities. But why should we? Well, trust but verify. And one of the important points that came out, I think, in this afternoon's hearing was a full description of all the different ways in which the intelligence agencies are overseen. I thought the hearing this afternoon was thoroughly worthwhile, both from the point of view of the committee that has to establish its credibility and from the point of view of the witnesses who had the chance to rebut some of the wilder accusations that have been thrown around since the Snowden revelations. Uh, some of the accusations thrown around by you. I mean, at one stage you were saying that uh, what, what uh, Edward Snowden had revealed, what The Guardian was publishing, was, was, was the biggest detriment to, to intelligence, what, since the Second World War? Well, and I stand by that. I think in terms of the loss of information, there hasn't been such a major loss of information, either from us or from our friends in the United States, ever. But what I didn't get listening to the hearing today, one was a genuine sense that the spy chiefs in this very rare opportunity were being challenged by parliamentarians, but also a genuine debate about whether this kind of dragnet surveillance actually has a democratic mandate. And ultimately, the spy chiefs are answerable to parliament and parliament is answerable to the British people. Well, what you heard this afternoon repeated on camera, on the record, to a proper parliamentary committee was the absolute assurance from those uh, three heads of agency that what they are doing is within our law. That's important to have that on the record. And we also heard what I thought was a very convincing explanation of the difference between bulk access to information on the internet, which they certainly have, and mass surveillance which they are not exercising. So Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the internet, uh, wrote a piece in The Guardian today where he said that governments cracking in or intelligence services cracking encryption codes is foolish but also dangerous because it exposes the internet to this, exactly the kind of infiltration that criminals so love. What do you say to that? Well, I've always admired him and still do. I think he was exaggerating to make his point. But he should know, shouldn't he? He invented the damn thing. No, no, but you have to be really very careful in uh, uh, encryption, matters of encryption. But what he didn't cover, of course, was if you weren't able to deal with encryption, you wouldn't get any intelligence on the terrorists and the criminals. And I suspect he doesn't want to live in a world that's uh, where terrorists and criminals have free use of the internet without the possibility of interception. So somewhere there's a balancing point where you take into account the very valid concerns that Tim Berners-Lee was making about not weakening the structure of the internet. But on the other hand, you do provide right. democratic societies like our own with the ability to deal with people who genuinely want to harm us. And the evidence we right. heard this afternoon is there are still several thousand people in this country who would like yeah. to harm us. OK, well, let's leave it there for a minute. If you could just stay on the line and listen to our next guest, and then I'd love to get your response to that. Let's turn over to Annie Marchand, then, who's in Dusseldorf uh, in Germany. You used to be an MI5 officer. You did this kind of work. Um, but you don't agree with the kind of dragnet intelligence that's going on at the moment. Why not? Well, I think initially uh, the best approach to trying to find people who threaten our real national security is through targeted approach. And this is what the old laws from the 1990s are designed to do, that if you have someone you suspect might have malign intentions against the UK, you then take out a warrant on that person or that group and you target your investigations and you use human sources too. And that's much more effective than this dragnet 
searching through the haystack stuff, which also, of course, erodes our basic civil liberties and our basic freedoms. It yeah. goes completely against the spirit of free media and free thought and free speech. But as the spy chiefs point out, even though they have technological access to millions, tens of millions of emails, they're not reading them all. They only read certain emails or listen to certain bits of communications if they have just cause to suspect some, some foul play. So that's the point, isn't it? I mean, you can't limit the technology, it's just how much you access it. Well, the point is the technology has exploded in scale and our laws have not kept pace in terms of overseeing and controlling what the spies do. So they can, so they do. They will trawl up all the information. And let's not forget, it's not just about listening to a telephone conversation or reading an email. It's also about picking up all the metadata, which can tell you a hell of a lot about someone's life. And we only have the tip of the iceberg, I think, in terms of the disclosures that Edward Snowden um, will produce or has produced. Right. So, um, at the moment, we're looking at a situation where there's probably far more going on behind the scenes, which is not covered by the law. Issues like tempera, which GCHQ has been disclosed to be doing, where they're tapping into the fiber optic cables and picking up millions and billions of communications. So it but, strikes very much at the heart right. of our democracy. It's about but, proportionality and oversight. But Annie Machon, the spy chiefs also told us today that they had thwarted 34 plots in the last eight years. I mean, if we were talking, having this conversation just after the 7-7 bombings, you might not be making the same points that you're making now. Well, of course, emotions are always heightened after an attack and you can't catch everyone. But I have to say that in 2008, the former commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Sir Ian Blair, now Lord Blair, went in front of the Intelligence and Security Committee and said that, um, that, that 12 terrorist operations been thwarted over the last few years and then there was a leak from one of the other intelligence agencies which said actually he's doubled the number it was only six we had to take him at his word if there hadn't been a leak we would not have known okay. and also the head of the NSA in the US has also had to dumb down the numbers he originally said that there are 54 terrorist okay. target uh, operations that have been thwarted all right and okay we've got to leave it there Annie Marchand Dusseldorf thanks very much one final word to you uh, Sir David Oman so you heard it there forget this dragnet um, surveillance it just creates distrust in the general public what you should be doing is what spies were always so good at which is human intelligence very targeted to specific suspects well the paradox is of course that what we heard explained this afternoon to Parliament was that the approach is targeted, it's not a dragnet, it is targeted, but I'm afraid these very powerful programmes are what you need nowadays with the internet to find the needles in the haystack and we are all safer as but a result of their work. But at what stage is the obsession with security bigger than our cherishing of liberty and freedom? One well, line. That's, that's the balance that Parliament itself has to strike okay. and pass the laws that control the agencies. Okay, got to leave it there, I'm afraid. Uh, Sir David Omond, uh, Annie Marchand, thank you very much indeed.